Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4, my name is Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique submachine gun known as Spray and Pray. First of all, we must locate this elusive lady who goes by the name of Cricket. Luckily, she is quite easy to spot with her rather rare yellow hood. Cricket is a wandering caravan merchant so she can be a little bit tricky to track down. She will either be at any of these following locations or between them. Her schedule is Bunker Hill, Outside Vault 81, Outside Warwick Homestead, Outside Diamond City, Outside Fallon's Department Store, Outside Quincy, Inside the Institute, and she may also travel to any settlement that the sole survivor has placed a caravan trading post at. If you go to any of these locations and don't find her straight away, just head to the next location or you can wait for her. And once again, you can run into her on the road between any of these given locations. If you are feeling unlucky, don't worry, as I travel to these locations, just to film it for this video, I ran into her three separate times at three of these separate locations in a matter of about two minutes. So you should be able to find her with no problems. So once we find Cricket and her eyeliner endorsed by Crayola, what we need to do is speak to her, go to Barter, head across to Weapons, and down the bottom in S, there will be Spray and Pray, the unique submachine gun we have been searching for. And as usual, the price of this weapon will fluctuate depending on your character's charisma level. Before we look at the base stats of Spray and Pray, as always I have reduced my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of Spray and Pray. Now when it is purchased it will probably come with a whole bunch of modifications but what I've done here is stripped it of all modifications so we can see its worst possible version of itself. So with no modifications applied to it, it has a base ballistic damage of 27, it uses the 45 rounds, its fire rate is 127, its range is 100 107, its accuracy is 63, weight is 12.7 pounds, and its value is 949 caps. And as we can see up the top there, spray and pray, bullets explode on impact, doing 15 points area effect damage. So now we're going to be applying modifications to it. What I'm going to be doing is just going to the very bottom modification of every mod slot, because in my opinion, the ones at the bottom were the best for this particular weapon. The only mod we'll speak briefly on is the choice of the suppressor. This drastically reduces the range of the weapon, but as we can see there, suppressor sound from firing exceptional per shot recoil and improved recoil control. The recoil of this weapon is pretty wild so having that extra recoil control is absolutely paramount. So now that it has been fully modified to my liking and I think to your liking, it has a base ballistic damage of 33, it still uses the 45 ammunition, its fire rate is 127, its range has dropped from 107 to 77 but that is the price of putting a suppressor on it. Its accuracy has gone up from 63 to 77, its weight has increased by about 5 pounds, and its value has increased to 1,101. And just as before, up the top, spray and pray, bullets explode on impact, doing 15 points area effect damage. So spray and pray, where to start with this? Why don't we talk about range? So after sticking the suppressor on it, we did lose some range, but that's okay. It wasn't exactly a long range weapon anyway. Spray and pray works perfectly for close to medium ranges. I'm not sure what the range between close and medium is, but whatever that middle ground is, this weapon was built for that. Although you can use it to hit enemies afar, and it is actually quite effective at destroying enemies that are far away, because even if your bullets miss, of course each bullet has this explosion effect, 15 points of area effect damage. So you can use it to take out enemies afar, it's just the spread is a bit meal. But medium to close ranges, your enemies are done. Although it performs beautifully in VATS, I think it actually performs better outside of VATS. Mainly the reason being inside vats you're limited to three round bursts, whereas outside vats you can hold the trigger down and wipe out whatever is in front of you. So with a clip size of 100 rounds, the fire rate of a submachine gun, and a 15 point area of effect explosion on every shot, that's a pretty exciting weapon. Even your enemies will be jumping with joy. Or furious physics engines, as they are frequently mistaken for one another. Now if you're like me, there's only one thing you hate more more than myeloke's, and that is myeloke eggs. Well, the ultimate kitchen utensil for scrambling eggs is spray and pray, specifically its explosion effect. You can end those shitty little creatures that come out of those myeloke eggs in no time at all. Myeloke's and their hell spawns aside, these explosive bullets of course work on any enemy. You have a group of enemies, you can end them pretty damn quickly with this explosive effect. If there's 20 enemies in range of a single bullet's explosion, they're all 
going to take 15 damage. This is one of the reasons that I think Spray and Pray is better outside of Vats. You can hold down the trigger and take out everything in the room, just like a removalist. These miniature explosions are also the bane of any enemy that has a layered armored system like power armor, myelokes and their shells, sentry bots, things like this. It strips them pretty quickly. With that in mind, I might take it out this weekend. The only real downside I can see of this AoE effect of its explosive bullets is that it may sometimes lead to friendly fire upon your companions or NPCs who are close to your enemies. But on the flip side, the explosions of each bullet benefit from the Demolition Expert perk, so you can make them more powerful. Now there are tales of rare and extraordinary events. Well, not really that exciting to be honest, but apparently, Spray and Prey can also be found on random vendors for sale, and apparently one can also be obtained from a legendary raider in or around Diamond City. This is off the wiki, which makes me believe it, think it's true, but it does sound bloody odd. Spray and Prey is fun for everyone, your enemies will have a blast in two ways. You can make scrambled eggs, you can even sweep the floor. It's fun for everyone. It sure is a gun of the highest caliber. The name Spray and Prey is actually an easter egg. It's named after all of my trips to the bathroom. And here's Spray and Prey in action. Unlike mine. And there you have it, there is my guide to the unique submachine gun known as Spray and Prey. I do hope that this video helped you in acquiring this weapon, finding Cricket, and also understanding how it is best to use, and that it really does just kill everything, it wins in every situation. If you would like to see other Fallout 4 guides, please feel free to click the playlist button on screen, this will of course take you to my Fallout 4 guides playlist, where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely, or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. I I would once again like to thank you very much for watching, it's been an absolute pleasure spraying all over you, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.